welcome, welcome, welcome to The Tonight Show. Thank you for being here. You made it. <laughs> President Biden is still on his European tour, and this weekend, he and the First Lady met with Queen Elizabeth at Windsor Castle. Here they are. Yeah? <laughs> this is what the James Bond poster is going to look like by the time they release that movie. <laughs> yeah, they look like they're waiting to buy wands at Harry Potter World. Um, <laughs> You could tell everyone felt a little awkward because that's not a photo, that's a video. <laughs> After his meeting with the Queen, Biden talked to reporters about what she was like. Watch this. I, I don't think she'd be in Solo, but you bet my mother. She reminded me of my mother in terms of the, the look of her and the, you know, just the generosity. I'm pretty sure that, that will be Biden's last meeting with the Queen. Don't you think? <laughs> I don't care who you are, no one wants to hear that they remind you of your mother. <laughs> Something tells me Biden would not do well on Tinder, right? <laughs> you remind me of my mother. All right, we'll just leave, right? From the look of you. Yeah. <laughs> well, just from the look of you and <laughs> your overall scent, yeah. you, uh... Your odor. Yeah, just, I'll get the check, you go home. <laughs> yeah, well, this was Queen Elizabeth's 13th meeting with a sitting U.S. president. That is amazing. And even more amazing is that she's uh, kept a diary of all those meetings. Really? Here's some excerpts. Yeah, look at this. President Eisenhower is one of the towering figures of the 20th century. What a delight to spend time together. I so enjoyed my evening with President Ford. He is an honorable man and a fine dancer. Holy <laughs> balls, what the <laughs> was that? It's also an audio book. Wow, it's, it's an also audio book. an audio book. Know that. Yeah, I know, and yeah. you saw her writing it. That's yeah, amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> well, after meeting with the Queen and all of the leaders at the G7 conference in the UK, Biden traveled to Brussels to join even more heads of state for the NATO summit. Everyone wanted something from Biden. Germany asked him to stand up to Russia. UK told him to keep an eye on China. And France wants him to renew Emily in Paris for a third season. Oh. <laughs> they love it. Yep, Biden attended the NATO summit in Brussels, and it was pretty interesting to see him interact with other world leaders. Here, li listen to what he had to say. It's an honor to be here in Brussels. I know you're famous for your chocolates, but I also love your Brussels sprouts. When I was a kid, our parents used to tell us, German Easter bunnies, come and leave you sprouts if you're a good kid all year. And we'd get all excited and wake up at 4, 4.30 in the morning, see if German Easter bunny came. Sometimes he did. It'd be a basket full of Brussels sprouts. We would take them and dip it in our ice cream. Called growing up, Jack. <laughs> growing up, Jack. I don't know what he said, but wow. th that wasn't all he said. Really? He said more. Yeah. Later, he said this. When I was a kid, we wouldn't get this many people together unless we were playing a game called Hoop the Milkman. It was like ring toss, but instead of throwing them on a peg, you throw the rings over the milkman's head while he was making his daily rounds. You got to be careful not to whap him in the jaw or else he can't whistle no more. Then nobody in town knows when the milk's there. You leave it out too long and it attracts milk bugs. And those suckers can bite. Just interesting the way he talked. But finally, he, he left him with this. We have one more clip. I love the people of France. I used to know this French guy back in Dover named Snake Eyes O'Shaughnessy. Guy had the hottest mouth this side of the Hudson River. Would pop a whole egg in his mouth. Seven minutes later, that sucker was hard-boiled. Tasted horrible, but we never told Snake Eyes. French are sensitive like that. There you go. Just very interesting. But... Some more news ahead of his meeting with Biden. Uh, Vladimir Putin was interviewed by NBC News, and he was asked to recall a story the president likes to tell about the time they met. Watch this. President Biden says, uh, one time when you met, you were inches away from each other. And he said to you, I'm looking in your eyes and I can't see a soul. But I do not remember this particular part of our conversations, to be honest with you. He probably has a good memory. <laughs> Even weirder, Biden also told Putin, you remind me of my mother. <laughs> can't stop saying that. Well, here's some good news. A new airport screening technology was just approved that will allow travelers to leave their shoes on while going through TSA checkpoints. <laughs> now the only person taking off their shoes will be the gross guy sitting next to you on the plane. 
But just to keep things difficult, they're gonna also make they're gonna make you remove your socks. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. Hold it. So only Mr. So only Mr. Bean will be the person allowed to air. <laughs> Board the flight. I saw that uh, Wheaties is commemorating its 100 year anniversary with a, a series of limited edition cereal boxes. I love Wheaties, yeah. Well, this is cool. Some of the boxes are even paying tribute to the everyday athlete. Oh. Check out uh, some of these. There's the co worker who won't stop talking about how many steps they took so far. <laughs> I only did 13,433 today. <laughs> Yesterday, I got, okay, we're. Uh, there's also a middle-aged man in Lycra. Oh. Yeah, right I've seen those guys. Yeah. They call them mammals. <laughs> middle-aged men in Lycra. Really? I didn't even know that. Mammals. Yeah, they get all dressed up, but like during the Tour de France, they go to Starbucks. <laughs> they go to Starbucks to meet their buddies. Yeah, yeah. with the clanky shoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> up next, we have a guy whose giant vat of protein powder has moved with him to four different apartments. Oh, there it is. <laughs> powder can't go bad, right? And of course, there is Questlove throwing a baseball. Oh. <laughs> Some more business news. Uh, Prada just launched Prada Outdoor, which includes a $995 volleyball and a $650 Frisbee. Take a look at this. It's the first time anyone's ever started a meeting like, so you guys know how Frisbees are just impossible to carry? <laughs> They're like impossible, right? So what do you do? <laughs> uh, finally, everybody, NBC is currently filming a new game show called Ultimate Slip and Slide that will premiere right after the closing ceremony for the Summer Olympics. Let's see how that's going. Production has been shut down on the new NBC show called The Ultimate Slip and Slide. The show had to be shut down after an outbreak of explosive diarrhea. <laughs> oh. 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 I'll just say it. Forget the Olympics. Put that on TV for two <laughs> weeks straight. I would watch it every... <laughs> I'd watch it every... Yep, NBC isn't happy the word got out, but they can't be surprised that it leaked. <laughs> just reached President Biden's 70% vaccination goal. And today, most COVID restrictions in the state were lifted. Yeah. Good job, New York. That's right, restaurants no longer have to space tables six feet apart or use physical partitions. New Yorkers heard them, were like, oh, really? Because we kind of like that. <laughs> we put those back? Ah, the good news is the partitions will be gone. The bad news is they're going back to where they came from, the urinals. Uh, uh, now, look, if you're one... Uh, uh, <laughs> I didn't know they were see-through. Uh, I didn't know they were see-through. No. Yeah. It's the number one reason. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, and if you're wondering whether it's safe to eat on the subway, again, the answer is it was never safe to eat on the subway. <laughs> Well, this is exciting. Next month, New York City is throwing a ticker tape parade to honor the pandemic's frontline workers. Yeah. That's right, a parade for doctors and nurses. It'll be like Mardi Gras, except when you flash them, they yell, hey, get that mole checked out. You go, okay. <laughs> hey, appreciate it. Uh, and this is nice in the spirit of being environmentally friendly. All the ticker tape will be made from used masks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The parade is a great way to show the world that New York City doctors, nurses, and frontline workers are the best, and New York City traffic is the worst. <laughs> Some more pandemic news. According to a new study, COVID infections are dropping where people are vaccinated and rising where they are not. <laughs> Read more about the study in the prestigious medical journal, Thanks, Genius. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is interesting. The world's first edible and functional face mask, which is made of melon bread, has <laughs> been released in Japan. Take a look. <laughs> the best part is people can hardly tell you're wearing one. Uh, can I see that when we're done? <laughs> we can't see it, but if she's wearing blue shorts, it's one of the best SpongeBob impressions I've ever seen. 
Let's get to some political news. Well, guys, President Biden is preparing for his big meeting tomorrow with Vladimir Putin. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. After the G7, NATO, and the Queen, it's like Biden got through all the levels and now has to face the final boss. <laughs> It's a pretty big uh, change of pace. First, Biden was with the Queen and having tea. Soon he'll be with Putin, avoiding all liquids. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Actually, no, B Biden is actually amped for the meeting. Today, he pounded a half gallon of Ensure and crushed the carton on his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, everyone's helping Biden prepare for the meeting, even some former Trump officials, actually. Yeah, immediately after Biden opened his briefing book, the Trump officials were like, you're already one step ahead of Donald, so this is amazing. <laughs> you opened it? Wow. That's right, advisors told Biden to be blunt with Putin. Then Biden delivered a 45-minute monologue on why that shouldn't be a problem. Oh. <laughs> Some TV news last night was episode two of The Bachelorette, uh, and things got pretty intense. Uh, yeah, we love that show. The emotions on that can be a little hard to handle sometimes. So we thought we could help. Uh, here's a clip of the episode Revoice with the least emotional person we know, Siri. <laughs> this is Let's Get Serious. Let's get serious. I didn't know the specifics 100%. Uh, all right, listen. That's the sleeping, stupid asleep. Look, man. I get what you're saying. That was the dumbest thing you could have possibly done. All right. She's out there upset, crying. Look, man. I'm not putting anybody on blast. Especially you already, you already did. You already have. I didn't put anyone on blast. Stop being like this, bro. Be logical. You're a grown ass man, bro. God. <laughs> Well, guys, the Olympics are almost here, and last night's uh, U.S. trials, Ryan Murphy advanced to the finals a 100-meter backstroke. Afterwards, he shared his key to success. Watch this. A nice swim earlier, but this one even faster. What do you attribute that to? I shaved my chest between, uh, between prelims and semis, so maybe that was a nice little boost. <laughs> I almost hate to ask, how do you build on this performance as you head to the final? Well, I'm going to shave my back tomorrow. If he wins the gold medal, it's going to be split half American, half Brazilian. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and finally, I heard about a family that's dealing with a pretty unusual problem. Check this out. A Buffalo, New York family has mysteriously received about 100 Amazon deliveries since the beginning of the month, but they don't know who ordered them. Boxes are piling up outside the family's house. The same item is in all of the boxes, silicone brackets for the inside of face masks. They've received more than 100,000 brackets. Family was like, well, I guess it could be worse. Today, President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin finally met for their big summit in Geneva, Switzerland. Yeah, it was pretty much the opposite of the Friends reunion. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Biden and Putin met at this Swiss estate. Ooh. Yeah, you may recognize it as the haunted asylum in every horror movie. <laughs> Actually, Putin found the place on his favorite house rental site, Air KGB. Well, Biden and Putin both arrived within 20 minutes of each other. Here they are shaking hands outside. You and her Once the president stepped inside, they sat down for another photo op. Take a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> look like two dads waiting for their daughters to finish trying on prom dresses. That like, oh, looks great, honey. Yeah. Putin looks like he's trying to remember which one of those books opens up the trap door. He's like, okay. <laughs> Say hello to the sharks, Mr. Biden. <laughs> there are some piranhas that were... Hold on. Then uh, Biden and Putin got down to business where it was just them, a red table, and Jada Pinkett Smith. And that's what I'm talking yeah. about. That's, that's, that's what I mean. Let's get down to business. Come on. The meeting was expected to be five hours, but lasted only half that time. Not a great sign when your summit is barely longer than Peter Rabbit 2. But after the meeting, the two leaders agreed to keep in touch. When Biden said, I'll give you my email, Putin said, I already have your email and password. <laughs> and Venmo, don't worry about it. 
Uh, and this is nice. The White House said Biden gave Putin a pair of custom aviator sunglasses. <laughs> Putin says he's excited to wear the aviators back home in Russia, where the sun's out twice a year. <laughs> Biden also gave Putin a crystal sculpture of a bison. Yeah. A, cr a crystal bison. Weirdly enough, Crystal Bison is also one of Trump's old girlfriends. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We paid her off 130000 130000 grand, yeah. yeah. <laughs> After the meeting, Putin held a press conference and was asked if he thinks the U.S. and Russia will now have a better relationship. And listen to his response. Do you think that at this present stage, we, are, we can talk about a new stage of bilateral relations? Oh, there is no happiness in life. There's only a mirage of it on the horizon. So, uh, you know, cherish that. What? That's actually an excerpt from Putin's new book, Chicken Soup for the Russian Soul. There's no happiness in life. There's no happiness in life. <laughs> Sounds like the slogan for Russian Applebee's. <laughs> uh, switching gears, according to an annual list that was just released, New Jersey is America's best state to live in. Yeah! The key factors they considered were cost of living, quality of education, and access to Gabagool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, finally, speaking of the Garden State, yesterday at a New Jersey water park, a water slide actually caught on fire. <laughs> Take a look at this thing. Holy. Oh. There it is, the best state to live in, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Water slide. <laughs> Meanwhile, there was still a 16-year-old lifeguard at the top of the slide saying, you can go. <laughs> you can go. You can go. You can go. You can go. <laughs> you can go. You can go. You can go. You can go. Yeah, you can go. Uh, I tried the thing just burst into flames, which is why the slide's new name is Gender Reveal Party. <laughs> Happy. I love you. Happy Thry Day. Thry Day, I love it. Yeah. Thry. I didn't make that up, right? Is that a thing? It is now. Happy Thry Day? Hey. Yeah, but I'm a Thry Day. <laughs> the energy, I'm already in the weekend already. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, this Sunday is Father's Day. Uh, that's right. So. Uh... <laughs> so make sure you call your dad, even though you'd both prefer a text. Uh, but talking with Dad on Father's Day is fun. It's a great way to catch up on which neighbors are annoying him for which reasons. <laughs> this guy uh, parks his car in front of his house all the time. <laughs> this guy plays his music guy. Okay, good. Dad. That's right. Father's Day is this Sunday, and Americans are expected to spend over twenty billion dollars. <laughs> that story again on Sunday. Over twenty billion scratch-off tickets will be sold. <laughs> good luck, Dad. Let's get to some news. After his week-long trip to Europe, President Biden is finally back in Washington, D.C. When he saw his schedule filled with meetings on infrastructure, immigration, and inflation, his first thought was, I already miss Putin. <laughs> yep, returning home was pretty emotional for Biden, mostly because on the flight there, he realized that he home alone to Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the change, you filthy animal. <laughs> But well, this is big. Uh, today, Biden signed the Juneteenth National Independence Day Act, <laughs> making Juneteenth a federal holiday. <laughs> the bill hit Biden's desk after it was passed in Congress, but 14 members of the House voted against it. Can we, can we see who they were? Yeah, oh. that's, uh, that's about right. That's about right. <laughs> That, that looks like the white paint sample section at Home Depot. <laughs> what do you think, honey? Should we paint the bathroom Mike Rogers or Thomas Massey? <laughs> uh, and I saw this. Uh, Jared Kushner just signed a book deal. Yeah, his book will come out next year, but he already has a few titles in mind. Uh, check these out. First, uh, there ah, is... Ah, uh... here we go. What's up, dude? Let me guess. 
Well, you're going to make fun of Jared Kushner, right, by saying a bunch of fake book titles. Yeah, that was a plan. And, <laughs> of course, each title will pop up as a graphic so everyone can see it and laugh about it. Right, that's kind of what I do. It's the whole first 10 minutes of the show. I, 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 I know exactly how this will go down. Okay, the top of the screen will have, like, a weird picture of Kushner, and it'll say, Kushner's book titles. And then under that, you'll list <laughs> fake titles, like, Fifty Shades of White. <laughs> or, or, uh, Diary of a Wimpy Adult. <laughs> or, uh, are you there, Don? It's me, your creepy son-in-law. <laughs> and then you'll do, Eat, Pray, Ask Daddy for a Million Dollars. <laughs> oh, or, or, Gone with the Slightest Gust of Wind. And then you'll finish it off with something like, the sun also rises while I sleep standing up <laughs> in a coffin. I'm guessing that's how this is gonna go. Yeah. You nailed it. No, it's a fun bit. You should do it. <laughs> All right, we'll do it tomorrow. Perfect. Uh, well, guys, get this. I read that for next year's Super Bowl, a 30-second ad spot will cost a record $6 million. And apparently some companies are already testing out shorter ads to avoid high costs. I mean, just, just check this out, this new ad I saw from Old Navy. Look at this. As you know, we here at Old Navy sell clothes. <laughs> I just... Wow. <laughs> Ch check out this ad I saw from Home Depot. Oh. Plywood, lamps, shovels, things of that nature. Of that nature. Wow. These are rough. Here's the last one here from Olive Garden. Breadsticks, when you're here. <laughs> Breadsticks, when you're here. Just to the point. <laughs> Breakfast, when you're here. Yeah. yeah. Some business news I heard that uh, rental car prices are at a record high and could even double by August. Ooh. Yeah, for car renters on a budget hoping to save a dollar to see the Alamo, this news is. This news really hurts. <laughs> Bye, everyone. See you all at the Emmys. <laughs>with COVID restrictions lifting all over the world, a lot of countries are opening back up to tourists this summer. And in fact, uh, many of them have released updated travel posters to help entice visitors. Take a look at these. This first one is for France. It says, we're still going to stand six feet away, but it's just because we don't like you. <laughs> wow. Again. <laughs> this next one's uh, for the United Kingdom. It says, the pubs are open and the sun is shining. Okay, the second one's a lie. <laughs> Here's one for Fiji. It says, not just a Zoom background anymore. <laughs> Next one is for Estonia. It says, come figure out whatever our deal is. <laughs> uh, finally, this last poster is for Spain. It says, the sooner you come back, the sooner you can brag to your friends that you went to Barcelona. <laughs> ah, with the bar Oh, we had so much fun. Where'd you go? What's that? Where'd you go? Oh, we just went to, like, we just went to Barcelona, and oh, really? uh, it was just so, it was so fun. How long were you there? We were, we were there two days. We were in Barcelona? Yeah. We were, well, one day. It was a layover, Not really. A week, what? It was a couple hours. Yeah. But, yeah, I had so much fun. I felt like I'm just, like, some part of me was from Barcelona. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, guys, listen to this. A computer programmer in the Philippines gave his newborn son the name Hypertext Markup Language. Or HTML, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the baby's first word will be why. <laughs> and finally, a new study out of the UK found that the aging process is unstoppable. <laughs> when they heard that, a bunch of people in LA said, We beg to differ. Hey.